So it's just on that screen. Cool. <clears throat> Dude, what are we going to talk about? Don't we let them dictate it a little bit? Who the people that chat in? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I do. I, I want people to. Yeah. Hopefully they do. We can just give our thoughts on the game real quick. And then we'll go from there. There really isn't much after that, dude. Yeah. There's no game to talk about next week. And then... Yeah. Dude, I'm so tired, man. I'm so beat. Between all the driving and all the partying, like I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> dude, when do you get your car back, dude? I have my car. I need. They need to tow it back to BMW so BMW can fix it. So when are they going to do that? I, they're working on it. That's all he told me. Like BMW and Yuma? No, there is Recording no BMW. in progress. BMW in San Diego. So they got to tow it all the way back. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome back, everybody. We're here. We made it. The Sons of Montezuma podcast. I'm not even going to tell everybody what we're talking about before we got in here, man, because, you know, everything's too much. Everything is too good in Aztec Nation right now. What's up, everybody? It's your host, Mateo San Diego. And we are joined once again by my co-host. Uh, if you're navigating your eyeballs on the screen, that sexy gentleman with the white beard up to the top <laughs> on the right is El Capitan. He's protecting our borders from sea to shining sea. It's at K5James. What's up, James? What's up? What's up? <laughs> you like that sexy comment, huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's accurate, though. It's accurate. <laughs> <laughs> and to the top left, he is the dirtiest of the Dan's. It is none other than at D Morton 78 Dirt Ball Dan. What's up, Dan? What's going on? How you doing? I'm doing great. The Aztecs win. The Aztecs. Well, I'm not going to go and throw that, but okay. The Aztecs win 16 to 14. Everybody saw it. Well, it, it wasn't that unwatchable, right, guys? I mean, it wasn't unwatchable filth, kind of teetering on, on the border of unwatchable filth. But, you know, we made it through. We made it through. Man, yeah. <laughs> I don't think it was unwatchable at all. I just, uh, <laughs> it was the, uh, the lack of scoring, obviously, was not great. But, like, the way the offense ran was like, Man, it was like night and day. 
versus what was going on before this week. So I'll, I'll let Dan get into it a little more. But yeah, I was I was like happier smiling up there watching this game. Yeah, I gotta um, first disclose that do I when we go into these games, I probably had some drinks, some shots, a little bit, and I haven't had a chance, or I never get the chance anymore to be able to watch it right again the game. So from what I re- I don't remember being that frustrated in the first half because I think I I saw completed passes. You know? So it, was, <laughs> it, it and it was something new I haven't seen and even weird like weird things. You know, and I got really excited when I saw them under center. They went under center much more than I expected for them to do that quickly. This is the offense. I like Jeff Horton's offense. I know people don't like some of the result. I like the style of the offense. I like the way it plays. And I think they show that they're going to be willing to throw the ball. It's, I think it, I think Jeff Horton could have been handcuffed a little bit by Rocky before. Um, because if they're going to throw it that much with a quarterback that hasn't been practicing, um, hasn't really ever played, that that tells you something as far as philosophy goes, I would think. Well, I know I saw both of you guys after the game, right? Because everybody kind of spread out, doing our, our different things during the game. And both of you guys were, like, just on fire in the parking lot, dude. Like, both of you, oh, they were under center. Like, I couldn't believe over 300 yards by Maiden. And, you know, I went back and looked at last week's stream, last week's, because, I mean, last week was crazy, guys. Like, we were we were at our breaking point, right? The university cut ties with Heklinski, brought in Lindley, we broke on air that Moose Maiden was going to be going back to the quarterback spot, but we didn't know he was going to start. So just like everybody else asked Tech Nation, we didn't know what was going to be the result of this game. We knew it was going to be kind of ugly, but we immediately talked about how we thought Maiden would be the best option at quarterback because otherwise, you know, you're faced with either playing Braxton who none of us wanted him out there, right? Because of that concussion. So, you know, big credit to the staff, big credit to, to Coach Hoke. We got to give him the credit for for doing the right thing in, in my eyes and not putting Braxton out there too early. It was either that or you're going to go with Liu, who, you know, all credit to Liu, but he's a true freshman. You don't want to put somebody in that position who, who hasn't been out there that long. So bringing Moose in, the new offense with Horton, like everything we saw out there, was like night and day, right? I mean, it was super efficient. Like the passing offense looked easy. It looked breezy. It looked, you know, like I don't know how to explain, but it, it just looked easy. It was it was the types of plays called like Dan always harps about. There was like timing passes, there was slants, there was outs. It wasn't all at or behind the line of scrimmage like it's been here for you know three years or whatever. So, yeah, it was, man, it was so much more enjoyable to watch, even though they didn't light up the scoreboard. And, yes, it was against a really bad Hawaii defense. But, I mean, that, that doesn't change, like, the, the things they were doing, you know. That, that stuff doesn't really change whether it's a good defense or a bad defense. It's just the passes will be more contested or they'll get more pressure, stuff like that. But, yeah, I, I, the way the offense performed, um, the, the run blocking was still a little bit of a disappointment. But they, they showed sparks here and there that they were going to be able to run the ball. And I think being able to throw the ball like it looks like they're starting to, that might open things up for the run game. The, I don't care about the level of competition argument, really, because we couldn't throw against Idaho State. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. so it's not – I mean, we just kind of got to go by what we've seen. And, yeah, they're probably not going to be able to do that against a, a great, better defense. But – if you compare it to what we've just seen the last three years, they they can't do what they just did. And, if, and be able to do that in one week with a new quarterback, uh, three-step drops we saw, um, you know, it was just – the one thing I guess was shocking, I thought – I didn't know – I think I just assumed that Maiden was also more of a running quarterback where you could tell he actually hates getting out of the pocket. You know, in some cases, he'll probably end up staying in the pocket too long. But um, it was a God, it was a sight for sore eyes to see someone step up in the pocket and hang in there to the very last second. Um, you'll probably have to be a little bit quicker with his decisions as season goes. But 
God, that was cool to watch. It's nice, nice to see. Like, and for this to happen so quickly, it's it was actually amazing. And I, I remember after the game, I was like, I was thinking to myself, why didn't they score more points? Yeah, like th- their offense looked like it could move kind of at will. And I don't, maybe just weird things, weird penalties, or uh, like just they should have scored more points. I'm kind of shocked they didn't. When you look at the yardage totals. Well, I think to add in there, there were there were some times where Maiden really wasn't as accurate as you would have liked to have seen. Guys were diving to make catches. Guys were stretching back. You know, that that touchdown by Bird. I mean, he caught that one-handed. It was thrown on the inside. It probably could have been led to the outside. Uh, you know, so you can cut Maiden some slack, though. I mean, geez, he hadn't played the quarterback position. In, you know, he didn't even play that much last year when he was on the, in the depth chart at number four. So I think those will be fine, fine-tuned things as they move forward. But you know, uh, OK, so before we go any further, I just want to thank everybody for tuning in and watching right now because we're starting to get the numbers up and whatnot. So everybody, be please be patient. I see your questions coming in on the chat. We're going to get to them very, very soon. But, you know, we just want to give our our little brief, you know, our, our couple cents on the game that we saw. As you guys can see, I'm sporting my sporting <laughs> my sons of money, Padres swinging Aztecs <laughs> T-shirt. Definitely go get that up at sons of I'm trying to wear this like every day, man. Just I don't want to break the the bad juju the Padres got oh, going yeah. right now, man. Jeez. Yeah, I'm going to watch the game tomorrow at my mom's again because I watched <laughs> the two games we won. I watched them at my mom's house. It's like God, I guess I got to go back. I got to go back tomorrow, man. <laughs> Dude, I was at that fair play bar on Friday, the first game the Padres won. It was electric, man. I was telling Dan like. You know, freaking Kim was like in a pickle between second and third and everybody's going crazy like it's the the biggest game ever. But we were there at the tailgate watching the game on Saturday before we got into the stadium. It's like we weren't going to miss it. Right. We're going to miss it. So, you know, full confession, we missed the first drive or two as far as the Aztecs go. But uh, man, Maiden, he lived up to it. He lived up to it. I wonder if um, because you start to think back like. Why was he down on the depth chart before and why did they uh, move positions? And it could be an accuracy thing, you know, because like that's the easiest thing to judge if you're a quarterback coach. Like, oh, man, he's just not very accurate with the ball. But I don't know, man, Cam, Cam, Cam Newton, the Cam, you saw Cam Newton's reaction to Maiden when he hit him in high school, dude. That was like as accurate as you could get. (laughs) But it, it, um, like, I think. There might be some accuracy issues. I don't know. But um, I think, you know, you can be made up for to get it in the ballpark and you go through your progressions and you stay in the pocket. There's strength. There's plus and minuses to it all. But I bet you from maybe Heklinski's point of view, maybe it was just accuracy or something. Because I did see some throws that were kind of pretty inaccurate. But and I don't know if it's a time away from quarterback thing or just, you know, that's, that's just something that we'll have to deal with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we got this week off. The bye comes at the most perfect time for this team, right? We all said that last week. You know, hopefully we can get this offense going even smoother. And then you got another week to face a Nevada team that really, I mean, they, they're they kind of in a similar situation that Hawaii was, right? You lose your coach. A lot of people transferred out. So, I mean, it is on the road, but there shouldn't be any reason why this offense shouldn't take another another step forward against that Nevada team. Um, Dude, can you believe, though, that we were the 20-point favorites? <laughs> That's crazy, right? <laughs> no way. Yeah. That, that was... tells you Vegas was not watching our games, or they weren't – yeah, I don't yeah. – you know. <laughs> yeah, you would think ma- making a coaching change prior to the game, that would, like, account, like, for dropping that a little bit, but it's like they didn't even – pay attention um are they thought we were just going to run all over them or something i don't know but i I don't know what the lines makers were thinking on that one and you know what credit to hawaii though you got to give them some credit like we we had wayne koto he's the host of the rainbow wrap-up i had him on for a couple minutes just did like a little viral video for for the preview of the game and you know uh, credit to them dude they hadn't really run the run and shoot offense like what they're known for, like what you would have thought Timmy Chang would have done when he first came in. So last week was their first time kind of operating from some of those principles, he said. So this week they were really looking to attack in that ways. And that offense has always given 
Rocky fits, you know, back when Rocky was here. So that three, three, five, maybe there's something about that, that, you know, they just stretch us out a little, you know, effectively. And they had their moments, man, big plays. Uh, I don't know how in that last run, that little running back got away from, from our defenders, man. That was crazy. That, that was the funny thing. We, when we came out of that game, we were like so disappointed in the defense and like so stoked about the offense and the defense only allowed what 14 points. <laughs> You know, I guess it's being unreasonable. We're just so used to excellence from them. That was kind of – that last drive wasn't even the worst of it. Like earlier in the game, that little running back was kind of gouging the the running game, uh, the running defense, the front seven, front six. So it was kind of like, you know, that's kind of – we've seen a little bit of that all year this year, and it's kind of worrisome. Like, is that going to be like a recurring thing for the rest of the year when we go – because Fresno State is going to run the ball with Mims. And um, we're going to face some teams that can run the ball down the line. So it's going to be something to pay attention to. So first question of the day or comment of the day, we're going to go to answer three, two, one on YouTube. And he says, Laka Laka and Banks have been MIA. Secondary has been making most of the tackles. So, I mean, in in concerns of what we're talking about, the defense right now, I mean, I I don't know if I could completely say that that Laka Laka and Banks have been MIA. I've noticed some plays from both of those guys, you know, in in run support and and Banks making some pressures. I mean, it's not to the level of what we saw last year, but I I wouldn't necessarily put it on either one of those guys. I mean, I I could I could tell you right now some safeties I've seen that have just really been either burnt deep and also have been ran through on some on some tackles so you know i think there's kind of weird it can go around you know i think the tackling all around has been that's been spotty man like some games they look really good or some parts of games they look really good and other times they they miss easy tackles i I think this is just a, a a weird defense i think this defense is still trying to find itself man to be honest so yeah it'll you guys are being too kind, dude. You guys are being too kind. That's, uh, I mean, I was expecting a lot more from Banks. Laka Laka, I don't know what I was necessarily expecting from him. But Banks, um, I was expecting a lot more, expecting constant pressure on the quarterback, uh, tackles for losses, being uh, someone that that is just making plays up and down the line. I thought he was going to be our best defensive line player um so i mean doesn't mean that we hate him or it doesn't mean he won't turn it around and eventually do it but i think i think the, the person who asked the question has, that, that certainly has some points to it okay okay let's see let's see who else who else is asking questions here or putting their their two cents in here cents. <laughs> mr kevin napolitano says open receivers accurate passes huddle <laughs> Well, yeah. So yeah, that was, Jay, that was, the was that? No, I was gonna say that was another thing too. Is the huddling? Yeah, that was really good to see, man. I, I yeah, I've always hated that look at me play calling, man. Even though I mean, some guys do it successfully in college football, I've just never been a big fan of it. And the, and then that's what I was trying to tell people before is that they wanted to speed it up even more, like when like that they want. Oh, we should go no huddle. We should go fast pace up to. Dude, they couldn't even do it at semi, you know. <laughs> I th- and it was the right move to go back and slow it down a little bit. Time of possession, we dominated. Yeah, yeah. This is true. This is true. Okay, so let- let's go down some of the stats before we move on to some more questions and comments. So Jalen Maiden, first start ever. Not just for the Aztecs. Like, we're talking ever at quarterback. 24 for 36, 322 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions. That's the big one. The running game was spread all about, but Chance Bell stood out with seven carries for 53 yards. It was great to see him back. He he was running. You could tell he was running very spirited. Terrell Shavers and Jesse Matthews, what can you say, man? Eight catches for Shavers. He was all over the place, 149 yards. Jesse Matthews, six for 68. Breon Penny and Makai Shaw both had four. But with, with Terrell Shavers, I mean, him and Maiden came over from Mississippi State. They're both Texas guys. So you could see that there was that connection between them two, that trust. They've probably been working out together for, for a couple of years now, right? I mean, they came together. So there was definitely that connection. Um, on the defense, you know, like they said, man, there, there were tackles spread all throughout. There isn't one one defensive player that really you can say had a had like a, a crazy play. The, the part that concerns me is that there weren't any sacks, no turnovers, no interceptions. 
So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, we've seen this before earlier in the season, and then they kind of bounced back. And, and now, I mean, you're going to have to turn some teams over if, if we're going to go through this Mountain West in the future. Like you said, go through some of these stronger teams. Let's see. Let's see. Sarah Eisen, the slant. Oh, my God, finally. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that was one all. of the things I, I did. Call, I did talk to Coach C earlier. You know, he's a big Raider fan, so he's watching the Raider game right now, man. He, there, there, there's no appearance by Coach C today, but he was telling me he saw the first couple of drives and he immediately could see in the offense that they were much more efficient, doing easy. You know, the the hitch game, everything was yeah. just everything right in front of you. You know, I mean, that last drive. I don't know how you guys felt when Hawaii took the lead. And it's like we were up there at the scoreboard bar area, right? And there were all these Hawaii fans up there hanging out with us. They were going crazy, you know, doing the chi use all the way from the top balcony. Like they were going nuts. But then as soon as we got the ball with about a little over a minute, six for six by Maiden. I mean, you can't ask for any any better performance on that final drive. Six for six. Everything was right in front of him. Guys were making like the extra effort to catch the balls. But he just looks so calm back there, standing up tall. Like, I, I know somebody made a comment that he might have been a little too calm for maybe Lindley's liking or the offense's liking. You know, like maybe he wasn't urgent enough or, or you know what I mean, that pace. I preferred it, though, man. I, I want my quarterback back there calm, cool, and just, just dishing it out. I mean, he's got that lefty stroke. It's kind of like, here, you get the ball. You get the ball. Run with it. I um I was surprisingly confident, like yeah. just like I was actually when Braxton uh, against Toledo. For some reason, I, I'm I've been confident about the offense in those situations. I don't know why. We shouldn't be. I mean, I we shouldn't have been for the Braxton one, but I just felt like we're just gonna go down the field and kick a field goal. I just yeah, it's it's I, not. I was like... more worried if we were gonna make the field. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The uh we weren't worried about them being able to complete a forward pass. So like, if you can yeah. complete a forward pass, you have a chance in a two minute drive. So yeah, dude, that was, I was surprisingly confident. Dan and I kind of looked at each other like, Oh, we got, we're gonna have a minute plus. We got a timeout. We should be good, man. We should be good. So you can, um, see, you can see Jack Brownie making the game winner right there on the screen. <laughs> and uh, you know, I mean, he had been perfect in field goals up to this game. Right. And then he missed that one. <laughs> I was freaking out for a second. You know, he's, he's not going to – you can't make them. I mean, very rarely do you guys make them all. So, yeah. But he made the one that counted, so that's all that matters to me. Yeah, yeah. So, has it, so nobody has asked yet what, what should become of the quarterback position going forward? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Who, who asked that already? That was like early in the chat over here. I didn't want to get there that early, but, you know. Roberto, Roberto. Saying on YouTube, will they stay with Maiden or go back to Burmeister? Now, that's the big question everybody wants to know, right? I mean, everybody's assuming with this 300-yard performance that Maiden is the guy. He's QB1. You know, why did we have him buried in the depth chart number four last year, which I, I can't really, you know, you say maybe there was inaccuracy issues, but, you know, I have my thoughts, man. I mean, how could you, how could you judge or misjudge We'll see. You know, I think he deserves the next start. You know, if anybody deserves anything on the football field, I don't know if you really say that. You got to earn it, you know, but I think he's earned the the start this past week. I mean, the guys obviously respect him very much. You can tell. So after this kind of performance, I mean, he's already eclipsed the season high in, in yards. In one game, one outing, his first start. So. I'm all in favor with starting them, guys. Like, I, I don't see – unless, like, the competition these next two weeks is that tight and that overwhelming from Braxton, I just don't see a situation where where you can not start Maiden, right? Yeah. Uh, we haven't seen Braxton in this offense either. Um, yeah. Very true, very true. And, um, and maybe, like – you know, when we were talking about why he was moved to defense, maybe, maybe he wasn't like a pure RPO guy like that Glinsky kind of seems to prefer. 
Um, he's more of a po- pocket passer, so that could be that could be something. But yeah, yeah, you know, I want him to start going forward. I think um, there's a couple of reasons. First, he he can start next year. He has another year left of eligibility. Um, it's a chance to get him a lot of reps on perhaps a down year for us. I know we're still trying to win the conference, but um, and there's a good chance that he gives us the best chance to win this year too. Um, with how beat up Burmeister is, um, their t- shoulder issues, concussions, all these things. Um, I'll just at least give him the next game, see how that goes. You know, I want to commit to him necessarily for the starter for the rest of the season, but I would commit to him for the starter for the next game um, and see how they go, see what they do. Yeah, I agree, man. I, th- I think he's earned the next start, but I think it should be an ongoing competition. I don't think he should just hand him the job, um, but he's definitely earned a chance at the next stop, at the next start and uh, see how he does, you know, as long as he, who knows how he's going to perform, but if, you're, if he performs well, you know, hey, you earned another shot, you get another start after and kind of go from there. And maybe Burmeister's because of those injury issues, maybe he's going to be a guy that's going to come off the bench and help out in situations like, you know, Lucas Johnson last year, you know, things of that nature. So we'll see, man. We'll see how it goes. Imagine think- being um, uh, Jesse Matthews and Terrell Shavers, <laughs> and they just have – Terrell Shavers especially, they he have a career game. And all of a sudden you're going back to a quarterback where they haven't been able to do anything, you know, and who's still, no matter what is going to happen, his first instinct is going to be to run the ball. Right. That's uh, Burmeister's first instinct is to run. So yeah, yeah. I think for like um, our receivers and tight ends and stuff, I think they'd be disappointed, honestly, if they, if, if they went back. So I think you bring up two really, really interesting points, Dan. And that's one, we haven't seen Braxton in Jeff Horton's offense, right? That's important. That's important. That's really important to me because first off, that offense under Heklinski, like you said, it was it seemed like it was heavy towards the RPO. We had, you know, Braxton come in. We had Will Haskell underneath him. Like that type of a quarterback, you're you're wanting to do these type of things. You're wanting to run these type of plays. Now that you got Jeff Horton in the mix, it's very similar in sets and whatnot, but I think their desire is for more of a pocket passer, like you're saying. So to me, that that has shown that, you know, Braxton, he wants to run the ball. Like, he's one, two progression, and then he wants to take off. And I think that's what the coaches wanted him to do, right? So, yeah. Will he even be able to perform as a pocket passer in Jeff Horton's office? That's yet to be seen, right? I'm leaning towards not. But the other point you bring up is that Maiden has that next year of eligibility, which is huge, 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 huge. We have some really good young quarterbacks in Crum and Liu and also Javance Johnson coming in. You know, hopefully we got that commit. He's a, a really good passer, really good athlete. But they're all young. I mean, we're talking about freshmen, true freshmen, incoming freshmen. So if Maiden can really grow in this offense and develop, I mean, the next two years, I mean, next year was not going to be easy without that intermediate quarterback like a Haskell who would have been coming into his sophomore year. So you have this gap now to fill that gap. Man, if Maiden can make that happen, that's huge for this program. Yeah, I would guess or assume that they're going to probably – try to bring in a transfer quarterback as well, just because the, the the gap is so huge from even what from made into crumb, I guess, or made in to Leo. There's probably going to be some type of grad transfer they bring in that, which sometimes it sucks because if the grad transfer doesn't make the team or doesn't start, then they end up leaving. So it's kind of, or maybe just even like a JC guy, uh, just something to have a little bit more protection from, red shirt freshmen, which yeah. are going to be the, the next quarterbacks. Yes. Especially next year, they're bringing a bunch back like on the offensive line and stuff like that. So it could be an interesting, like a spicy team next year. So the, the, like- the thing I don't like about bringing another transfer in is that we, we've seen like, they got to learn the offense. They got to get adapted. You got to build those connections with the receivers right now. But what, what we've seen with Maiden 
you know, I'm seeing in the chat a lot. If it isn't broke, Mr. Butler, I see you. If it isn't broke, you know, uh, Ricky Toronto, Braxton's too panicky in the pocket, you know. Uh, you know, if they got that connection right now with these guys, you kind of – you got to ride the hot hand, right? You got to ride the hot hand. Yeah, man. Like we've, had, um, we've had some success with transfer quarterbacks, though. Um, you know, Katz – uh he threw well when he before he was injured and maxwell smith played okay so there's some that could come in and you know just maybe not start but at least compete a little bit for the starting spot um then plus i think even from a numbers issue they need another one anyways um so we'll see what happens yeah it'll be interesting to see if they start going after like you said maybe a jc guy i think that might be unless they find a really good guy in the the portal like maybe a, a guy that's like a, a redshirt sophomore or a redshirt junior or something like that then maybe they go jc it will depend on how well made in place for the rest of the year how <laughs> a transfer quarterback we could get yeah yeah i agree with that if, if he plays like he did the other night that that'll bode well for getting a, a quality transfer well if he plays well like he did the other night we're gonna get a low level transfer no but if he no plays but i mean but I mean, there'll be somebody that that can that wa wants to throw the ball that will come in, even if they may be, you know, they, they're not expecting to start, but at least somebody right. that has some potential. Like, like I said, talking about a younger guy, like a, a mid grade guy. And that's the thing. And maybe you bring in like a, a junior. Yeah. Right, to where he could still that that quarterback could play after maiden leaves or something like that or have a better chance. Exactly. That that's kind of what I was getting at. Is they would go after like a, a not necessarily a, a graduate senior, but a a, a junior, a redshirt senior, so, excuse me, redshirt sophomore transfer. That way he can be the the even more of a bridge between maiden and possibly maiden and the young kids that are coming in, or that are here. Well, we know Coach Hoke is all about competition. So yeah, if you bring in a junior, that'd be cool. Give, give some more competition to that room, to that group. Let's see. Kevin Napolitano, who would the receivers pick for quarterback? That's that's really you – know, <laughs> Oh, we know that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it kind of comes down to that, right, guys? Like, I think that's pretty self-explanatory, man. They're, they're yeah. you know, they, they actually got they thrown. Were, <laughs> yeah, they were – they, they were given everything they had out there. They, were, they, were, they wanted that guy. In the, yeah. dude, he would stay in the pocket. Yeah, like he was getting, you know, knocked around and still stayed in there and still kept his head downfield. So he'll probably need to develop a little bit more pocket presence than that and then not hold on to it so long. But, damn, they must have loved that. And, was, another, um, and another thing is, is he spread the ball around. Like, everybody yeah. was getting passes. I mean, that's going to make for a happier receiving core. There was one – play specifically i can picture in my mind i, I want to say like the third quarter or something like that man the pocket closed to like an arm's length around him and he yeah. still stood in there and delivered the ball and completed the pass i was like amazed man that was really it was really nice to see the quarterback step into the pocket climb the ladder instead of immediately bailing out and getting outside yeah and we know we know he's an athlete still so you know if he if he needs to run he could run he made i think he had a big run I want to say on that last drive or the towards the end of the game where he needed to get close to a first down or something. And I remember him making it happen. So we, and we know the way he played on defense. So we know he's an athlete. So, you know, if he has to, he could take the ball and run. And I bet you he's not that easy to bring down when he gets ahead of steam either. No, man, he's got some good size on him. He's definitely got some great size on him. People don't want to bring him down that easy. So hmm, let's see. Answer three, two, one. Even if Maiden doesn't have a great week in practice, who cares? He's been playing safety for a year. Give him time to adjust. He had a hell of a game. I mean, I agree, man. I mean, it's it's Nevada. It's not going to be, you know, the, the world's toughest competition. But I think it, it gives a good gauge to to let him try out some things. And, hey, if he struggles, I mean, it's probably not going to be as bad as, as what we've seen. So He has to have earned one more start, man. I, I, I don't see how – on God's green earth, you could not play him the next game. <laughs> you could not start him the next game with his performance the last game, dude. That, like that, I, I know Burmeister was the guy coming into the season, but if a, you go with the hot hand, man, if a guy is playing well, you stick with him. 
And also, I mean, just out of respect for the chance he took to, be, to move away from safety. He was getting a lot of reps at safety. Yeah. He was an impact player. So for him on less than a week's notice to kind of sacrifice um, like his standing on defense to come to the offense, I think that should be rewarded as well. He could have easily said, no, man, I, I'm <laughs> defense now. Yeah. Because it wasn't even guaranteed that he was going to start because he didn't know if Braxton was coming back. Um, and who knew what they're going to do with the freshman quarterback. So for him to, for him to step up um, and perform well, I, I think it would be like bad. Uh, I think the, it wouldn't be good for team morale. Yeah. Hmm. Well, let's see. Go S D R E O. I'm so thankful for all coach coach Horton does. Thank you, coach. <laughs> Two step drop and had the balls to throw it. Fun to watch. Hopeful again. Nice touch on the pass as well. Go Aztecs. Well, yeah. I, I, you know what? I think he should get more talk. We're talking all about Maiden. But I think there is something to be said with, with the game and what he was able to implement in such a short amount of time. And he really did with what Coach C said, um, you know, simplifying the offense, you know, slowing it down, going into huddle, less movement on the line of scrimmage. Um, really things that you would have thought Heklinski would have tried with so much mistakes. Like, it's kind of shocking that he didn't try to slow it down. He didn't go to a less complicated offense. Um, and then by, by, you know, by doing so, there was like some easy, just, you know, tosses to the wide receivers and, uh, the different players, man. It was like, they looked so simple. Some of the pass routes. Yeah. And you want to talk about like under talked about people that contributed to this. How about Ryan Lindley, man? I mean, he got a guy ready who hadn't played quarterback you know, in a, what, a year, <laughs> just about since, since spring, at least um, he got him ready to go and got him comfortable and got him ready. And he had a hell of a performance. Uh, you know, a lot of that is made in just natural ability and he's been playing quarterback most of his life, but still like you got to give Ryan Lilly a lot of credit for the way he was calm out there and performed and poised. And I, I think that that may have been a missing piece as well. When we talk about what was here before, I mean, if you think about it, James, even when, Maiden, even when Maiden was practicing with the quarterbacks before, he never took snaps under center. You know, it was like, it's like a completely – they weren't doing three-step drops. Like, there was nothing that – that offense wasn't that similar to what they've been running. I mean, I know some of it is. But for the most part, man, it was kind of shocking the amount of change. And he adapted well, you know. Yeah, Absolutely. Okay, guys, we're going to take a quick time out in the action. But when we come back, I want to talk a little bit about the run game. Why is it not as dominant as it used to be? And then let's look ahead to some of our opponents coming up because we're getting to the thick of Mountain West play. A lot of big games coming up. So we're going to take a quick time out, guys. And, uh, yeah, stay tight. Oh, yeah. Getting stronger. This is how uh, it was up to like 33. No shit, huh? Yeah, it's pretty good. Not bad. Look, like that, Matt, I did it for you, dude. What's that? The, the flag or the... the, the... <laughs> I, I moved my, that vacuum. <laughs> I took it off the vacuum. Don't take too long. Don't take too long. <laughs> now I'm just going to run and grab a drink, man. Yeah. Dude, I'm so damn tired, man. For the Aggies, he steps up, he's in trouble, and he sacks. Keyshawn Banks, the three-time all-conference player. Oh, Daniels goes down. And 
San Diego State takes over. Another blitz. Wow. Reels flushed and caught and dropped. Keyshawn Banks. <laughs> the curse of SOM NIL. <laughs> <laughs> I see everybody, everybody on Twitter. They're like, hey, Maiden, he needs a Sons of Money NIL now. I got to sign him up. Got to sign him up. What do you guys think? Put it in the chat. Should we sign? Should we attempt to see if Maiden will sign an NIL with us? I, I feel like it might be might be a good time. Might be a little early. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I wish I could sign everybody on the team, right? Give them their own gear. But yeah. um, that, that could be interesting. That could be interesting. I don't know, man. It might, like Dan was saying, it might be cursed, like the uh, Sports <laughs> no. Illustrated cover, dude. <laughs> like the Madden. The, like the Madden. <laughs> oh, yeah, the Madden cover. That's right. <laughs> no, uh, Jesse Matthews played well last yeah, year. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean, it, definitely it, it's worth it to reach out to him and see. I don't know if maybe you want to wait till the next game, but by then the, uh, the maiden train may be gone and you had your chance and missed out, dude. <laughs> you might be with Wheaties by then, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I see you, Mr. Butler. I see you. Sign, sign him. Sign him. And Butler. <laughs> Iron Maiden themed shirt. Yeah, like that. Oh, like that. You see uh, Lemur Femur's little graphic he did? That was awesome. Yeah. yeah. That guy, so the Iron Maiden. That's all, That's actually awesome, man. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Okay, guys. So it was the first real night game there at Snapdragon Stadium. The first time we really got to stretch our legs and go deep into the night. I didn't get out to like 1130, almost midnight. So what do you guys think? Because we've already made our roadie this year. We went up to Utah, the Salt Lake City game. And that environment was amazing. And, and I mean, yeah, there were a lot of people there in the stands, right? They're a big time Pac-12 team. I get it. But what was going on on the field? the fire, the motorcycle leading the team, like the music, the energy. They put a lot of effort and planning into their pageantry. What did you guys think of this game, the first night game? You see the Aztecs come out of the tunnel, got some fire, some smoke, the lights are blinking. What did you guys think? Did they, did they step it up pretty well? Well, unfortunately, the Padre game ran a little bit long. So <laughs> We didn't see the initial one. All the entrances, which is – it really bums me out, man, because I was telling James I wanted to get in there just so I could watch all that stuff because the stadium itself really pops that night. Um, the the lighting, the video boards, uh, the ribbons, uh, it's a whole different – it feels like it's a whole different stadium at night. Um, and it's it – this it looks awesome. So I wish I would have seen it. I saw, you know, some of the the – fireworks and stuff go off and touchdowns and, and, and things, but I want to see the player entrance again. And um, UNLV will be a big game for that for yeah. homecoming. So 
Yeah, just even standing outside, like tailgating at night was cool because they have those lights on the outside and it kind of glows like that red. Yeah, glow. that red light crap is awesome, man. Yeah, it, that is such a cool little touch, man. Um, my, uh, the issue I had is one thing to compare it to Utah is it seemed like I hear laughing in the background. You guys hear <laughs> <laughs> uh, Utah really, uh, it seemed like they made like the DJ the a focus of their, their game day environment. And you could hear the music over just about everything. Um, it was kind of like the, it was like high, the volume of the DJ was like higher than the stadium announcer, the PA announcer. Right. They like focused and made the DJ an important part of the deal. And it doesn't seem like we do that. Like you can barely hear the music sometimes. It's kind of like, like background music thing. Yeah. So I, I would like to see them uh, pipe up uh, DJ uh, Reek, uh, not Reek, uh, the hell's his name? Goddamn. I forgot his name. You're our homeboy, man. Ortiz. <laughs> Robert Ortiz, man. Robert, Robert Ortiz. Ortiz. Yeah. I, I had a brain fart. Sorry, Robert. Um, yeah, I'd like to see them hype up. Uh, DJ Robert a little more and, and give him a little more volume and a little more uh, get him into the game and like part of the environment a little better, especially like for the intros and stuff like that. Introductions. That would be cool. Fiend saying it's a little underwhelming because nobody's in their seats. I get it. You know, we're <laughs> Californians, man. We show up late, fashionably late. I know I do all. No, the man. I'd, be, I'd be late for this podcast if I could, man. But the, but know, the production just... values at Utah were better than yeah. San Diego State. Yeah, just because they're they're like a well-oiled machine. They've been doing it forever there. And, um, and that's got- another thing is when you do have good pre-game pre-game festivities, and you're like these fans want to be there for early because they want to watch all this stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Um, it kind of it, it attracts them. Now the Hawaii game was different because of the Padre game going on. Honestly, like thankfully the Padres fell behind and it made it easy to go into the game. But if it was you know, tie game and you're going in the eighth. What are you going to like? Yeah. Everyone's out there watching the game. <laughs> I, I we mean, might not have made it in there until halftime, dude. If they- yeah. <laughs> I, I I don't want to go there, but, you know, something that could help. Bring back, bring back the warrior, bro. Bring back the warrior, man. You know, that pageantry, I, something, something, it needs some kind of excitement in the beginning. You know what I mean? Something that's yeah. different, something that's unique. You know what I mean? Well, that, that's another thing. I don't think that Utah maybe does this every game, but they really paid tribute to the Ute Nation Yeah, uh, when we were there. Where And they go the whole nine yards, man. They, it's not it's not anything that's just a front for, you know, that you could tell that they're actually true partners. Now, that's not anything really San Diego State could do, or I can't think of a way that they could do it necessarily with the, with the Aztecs. Yeah. But – Adding some type of culture to the to the event, you know, even, you know, an Aztec video board thing or something like adding something Aztec related would be pretty cool. And then, like, like I mentioned to you, Mateo, I know you don't want to hear it, but what did you see running around the field at the Utah game? Did you see a Ute running around the Utah game? No, we saw they have like a hawk. Yeah, the the eagle, whatever. A the hawk, like a, a mascot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. we need to bring bring back Puma, bro. Bring back Zuma the Puma. Zuma, <laughs> Zuma the Puma. I don't have any problem with Zuma, man. I know some people hate it. You know, they hated the the you know maybe because it's a cat and it's kind of like in the cat line with you know BYU and all that stuff. But no, man, it was it was a, what was it, a Puma or a Jaguar? It's like the same the yeah. different way to say the same species. So it's like uh, it's this. It's an actual animal, you know, that's prevalent to the Aztec culture. So, yeah, yeah. you know, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. I, I think back then they may have not introduced it as well as they probably could have. Yeah. I think now might it might be a little different story. It might be a little more accepted if they were to do it right. Like, uh, make it black. Make it a panther, you know, make it a, a black uh, cat. To me, that would be perfect. It'd be, it'd be fall in line. Yeah, I, either that or like an, e- an eagle also, man. You know, because the, there were the, ag- the jaguar warriors and the eagle warriors and the Aztec military. So maybe do an eagle or something like that. But yeah, they need some kind of animal mascot like that. I think that would like kind of help to, to kind of run around and be goofy and get the crowd into it. And the kids love that stuff. So I, I think that would be a big thing that wouldn't be like crazy expensive to do. 
and it wouldn't affect it wouldn't impact any like cultural issues that are brought up by people that are still sensitive about the Aztec warrior thing. So I definitely think that's something they could do and should do. Yeah. Sarah Eisen says Utah's eagle or whatever is called swoop. Swoop. Yeah. swoop. So, I mean, they, they do a good job with it. Like it's, it's cool for the kids. I think it, it, you know, you always need some kind of a mascot just to, to be that type of cheerleader, that energy and all that stuff. But aside from that, there's a lot more that could be done, you know, at the stadium, I think. Oh, no. Another cool thing. Uh, I was talking to Dan. We uh, I I got our kids onto that race, that little halftime race. Oh, OK. Yeah. Snapdragon. Yeah. yeah they had a they had a blast, like mashing the buttons on the phone. You know, they, they had a great time doing it. So that, that's like one really cool thing that they do that you don't see anywhere else, really, as far as I know. Um, don't lie, dude. Team James Cruz was crying after. <laughs> yeah. After- after our, our car won, dude. Yeah, my, my daughter's kind of, kind of, she's not a very good loser, so she wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> dude. But up until that, it was fun. Yeah. <laughs> so wait a minute. Was, was she, was she like cheering against the Aztecs or something? What was going no, on? it's there's Team Red and Team Black. Oh, okay. okay, so okay. On that little <laughs> halftime race. And she happened to be on Team Red, I think. And, and Dan's okay. kids were on Team Black. Journey Krishna says Aztec Jaguar. Eric Butler says Black Panther with red Terminator eyes. So, yeah, I, I'm down. To <laughs> yeah, dude, I mean, yeah, I'm down. I'm down. Yes. All I know, all I know, before we get back into football, there needs to be some more diamonds action on the field. That's all I'm saying. There needs to be some more diamonds action. They, they put on a show. I saw everybody was into it when they went. It was like during the timeout call. And they went in the end zone. And, I mean, those girls were were dancing. Like, they were putting Dude. on a show. It, the energy was, like. Dan missed it because he was getting us um, a round of drinks. But they went out there and they announced them. The student section went crazy. It was, like, yeah. that was, like, one of the biggest reactions of the night. And yeah. I was so pumped. I was so happy for them because those girls deserved it, man. They worked hard. And that was definitely more, more diamonds action on the field was cool with me, man. I know there was an article that came out about USC having uh, their own group formed and it was kind of like got all the headlines. Like, dude, the Diamonds have been around for like 10 years or more. So, yeah. you know, whenever you're the first to do something, you you, you kind of have to take your your lumps kind of like bashing through the door. Yeah. But, uh, you know, they deserve they deserve more opportunities, more love, more shine. So good to see that going on. Definitely. <laughs> Okay, let's get back to football before we call it a night because, you know, it's Monday, man. We got a long week. There's no game this week. We got a bye week. So we got to, like, we got to sit on this win for all week. We got to sit on it. We got to dwell on it. We got to put it under a microscope and just dissect every single play. But, you know, it was a win, so you kind of just take it. It's a win. We're going to have visions of awesome passing dancing in our heads until next week. (laughs) Like what I told, like I was saying before, like, an ugly win is just so much better than a loss. And now we know because we've, we've had a few of them, you know? Yeah. So I didn't care even if we won. Ugly. I just wanted to win. I wanted to have a good rest of the week. Not, you know, kind of kind of move forward with the new coaching. And we got the win, and that's what counts. So moving forward, like we said, we got bye week this week, which we're going to win. <laughs> then we got at Nevada Reno. Now, for those of you who may not know, for those of you who are watching right now, it was 10 years ago exactly that the Aztecs were in a very similar situation that we are in this year, right? We were having quarterback issues. We had a transfer come in. Ryan Katz came in from Oregon State and he was this physical quarterback. I mean, dude was fast. He could he could yeah. really sling it as well. We go up to Nevada Reno. The season had already started off kind of rough. If we would have lost against Reno, we probably would have been in danger of missing out on a bowl cuz it just it would have went it would have went pretty downhill fast, I think. It was Rocky Long's like second season. Um so Ryan Lindley had just graduated. A lot of seniors had just moved on and we're playing Nevada and Ryan Katz, this quarterback goes down, like breaks his leg or something like something crazy, right? He was done for the year. They bring in Adam Dingwell. So for those of you who may not know who Adam Dingwell is, 
you're going to learn because we actually had a sit down interview with Adam Dingwell. We're going to release that podcast in the next uh, week or so. And we're going to get a chance to talk with him because it was 10 years ago. It was the Adam Dingwell game, the scared money don't make no money game. Right. And that changed a lot of things. They turned the season around. He won the game through a touchdown pass to our dearly departed Gavin Escobar. And then through a two point conversion to win in Reno. So we got Reno 10 years later, once again, coming up in another week. And man, you know, 10 years flew by really fast, really fast. But that was like the start of this whole turnaround behind, you know, Hoke, Long, and now back to Hoke. I'll never forget, man, that game, that at that point of the game, it was like, I want to say almost midnight. And, uh, my ex-wife was like passed out in bed and I'm trying to like watch the game, like biting my nails and stuff. And when he completed that, <laughs> me trying not to yell was like the struggle of all struggles. <laughs> it was a, that was a wild finish for sure. Well, I wish I could make the trip up to Reno, but I can't. We were thinking about it at the time, yeah. right? Yeah. I really want to go. I really want to go. But let's see, what what are we going to do with this run game? Because, I mean, yeah, I couldn't do it without myself. Well, what are we, we're gonna, what are we going to do with this run game? Because, I mean, we, we are going to effectively have to run the ball better if we're going to compete in the Mountain West. West. Yeah, like, like Dan said, I'm, I'm kind of bummed I couldn't watch the game after because I, I, it's hard to watch offensive line play when you're watching the game. Um, you can kind of pick up stuff in the passing game because you can see the pocket form and stuff like that. And you can see occasionally like point of impact where they're trying to run the ball, like guys missing blocks or get not, not moving their guy out of the way. Um, I, I, I don't know what the issue is, like without taking a good look at it. Um, but I, I think just got to be more consistent. I think they have right now that Abdullah kids playing because I, I still don't know what's going on with Masuli. Um, so I, I think there's some issues because it's not the same line that's been in there. Or they're kind of moving guys in and out. And, you know, they're young guys. so. We'll see, man. And also, like, the, the we've had injuries that running back as well with Chance Bell going down at first, and then the Armstead went down. And so it seems like every time we get a, a running back that starts to get going, they get hurt. So I think it's going to be a, a progressing thing, like we've talked about. Hopefully this bye week will help everybody get healthy. They can get Masuli back in there and um, maybe get Armstead back That because he was really starting to come into his own when he got hurt. So we'll, we'll just have to watch and see how it goes, see how it progresses. I mean, I, I wonder how much emphasis was put on the, the run last week when you're trying to introduce a new quarterback. You're trying it. And if there's – look, you can say what you want about Horn, but he's going to be able to run the ball. That's, what, that's just – you know, we're going to get the running. I'm not too worried about it. Um, and, you know, the, the the offensive line's still young and still gelling, and they're going – they're taking their lumps. But I think um, – Horton will run a run scheme that is, isn't very complicated um, where they get to play downhill a bit more. And um, I think even load up with more tight ends and a full back, like they were doing with Rudolph and make it a bit, bit easier to run the ball. I was really happy to see Rudolph back out there, man. He, to me, he's the the guy that could play that, that kind of fullback role rather than, uh, anybody else in that tight end group, you know what I mean? He's a bruiser, man. He's a bruiser. Yeah. A bruiser. yeah. I'm glad you hit on that, uh, James. Masuli coming back, you know, he's he's pretty key to that run game, that big body, and and I think him being there with Simmons will kind of rub off them too on that on that right side as well. Um, and no doubt Hawaii was stacking the box, like like some of you guys in the chat are saying for sure. You know, they were gonna make force maiden to beat them. And he put up the yardage, you know, hopefully that'll turn into more touchdowns. But uh, yeah, Stan Robinson, improved passing attack should keep the D from constantly stacking the box for sure. For sure. I I'm just excited about Horton's offense, man. I really am. I think having a couple of years away and kind of seeing what was transpiring these last few years, I I'm sure he was probably chomping at the bit like, we could do this. We could be doing that. You know, I see the areas that we can we can get this thing going in the right direction. So I'm excited for him to get in there. And, and yeah. I, th 
I, I was like, if, I was telling James there at the time, he must have been holding like, <laughs> like he must have been holding a lot in when Hecklinski, just from a, if you look at the philosophies and the style of offense, uh, he probably had a lot of stuff that he could say about, hey, maybe we should go to the huddle or maybe we should go under center a little bit. Maybe we should use less movement. But he just had to probably bite his tongue, you know. It's not his offense. So um, to see a completely different look, it was was pretty crazy to me. Also, like you said, Dan, like everybody has this preconception about Horton, like, oh, he just likes to run the ball and that's it. And But we don't know how much of that was like Rocky Long telling him, hey, run the ball. Don't be throwing the ball all over the place. Because I know back when he was like the head coach of Nevada and UNLV, they had like record passing. And like I said before, he was like Matt Stafford's first quarterback coach. He was he's coached for high powered uh, NFL offenses. Yeah. So I, I don't know how much of that was Rocky Long and how much of it was, you know, Jeff Horton being conservative. So maybe him without the handcuffs on, we might see a little bit more, a little bit more of an aired out offense. I mean, and then also, let's remember when he was offensive coordinator, we had a QB coach that was an option quarterback. <laughs> Blaine Morgan, like, so, I mean, if you, I was, I was actually doing some research on Horton back when he was at Wisconsin. And if I guess like the three quarterbacks were there were the best, they, he was a quarterback coach where the, had the best career numbers. Um, and it, so it was pretty, like, I think he probably gets a bad rap, but they threw it 36 times last week in a close game too. It wasn't like they threw it. Because uh, they were behind or or something like that, and in a competitive game, they threw the ball. Man, Blaine Morgan, that's such a good point there, dude. I, I looking back, it makes you like that was, at the time. That was a mind boggling. That was a mind boggling hire. Like I thought it was weird. Um, I couldn't believe that. <laughs> I, was, I was shocked. My thinking at the time was okay. They're going to go to more of that read option game. They're going to get m- more about that power spread kind of thing. And, you know, they're going to have him teach these quarterbacks how to do the option type movements and stuff like that and reads, but like, we never went to that. So it was like, what the, what did you bring him in for? If that's not, you're going to have him do. And we didn't Uh, even recruit to that type of a quarterback till, you know, later down the line with Askel. Like we didn't recruit that type of a physical runner or quarterback at all. I, I know. I guess he was like pretty big in Texas recruiting. He helped a lot in getting some guys from Texas, but as far as like, yeah, his coaching, I I don't know, you know, what was the, because it's not like he was a guy who just coached at Air Force for a few few years. He played at Air Force and coached at Air Force like his whole career. It's not like he had like this varied history of learning all these different styles of offense. He was a, he was a triple option quarterback, a triple option coach. So yeah, that was a, a head scratching move for sure. In retrospect. So I was telling you about Jeff Horn. So, the quarterbacks during his tenure at Wisconsin, which are Jim Sorge, Brooks Bollinger, and John Stocko, ranked first, second, and fourth in, in Badgers history in passing yards. So, I, I mean, I don't, like, he kind of gets this conservative label, and I don't even know how conservative he really is. Um, but he want, I mean, he, he, you, got, you got to do what the head coach wants. So, if Brady wants him to open it up more, he'll do so. And if he wants him to tone it down more, he'll do so. Yeah. Hmm, 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 hmm. Well, let's see. Answer 321 wants to know, you guys going to the Fresno game? What are we going to say to that, guys? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> no. <laughs> never again. Never. Well, if, never give, say give them some stories, James. Give them some stories. <laughs> if I'm you already... guys have not heard last year's podcast when we played Fresno, you need to go back, dig in the crates, because that is one that, oh, that's yeah. one for the record books for sure. Yeah, just I'm not gonna rehash it. Go back, listen to that one. <laughs> it was uh, all it, it was the worst road trip I've ever been on. <laughs> definitely, there's always a potential for a fight when a Fresno San Diego oh. State game is happening, whether in Fresno or in San Diego or in Carson last year. Like there's yeah. the, that potential. It's just not it's it's not really a desirable place to go watch a game if you're an opposing fan base and that's great for them right they have a great home field advantage because of that i mean you guys saw last year when they played boise they were fighting themselves they were literally <laughs> beating each other up because and they dude, were getting you know killed was, on the field 
I was thinking about that when um, I hear like the Pac-12 and conference realignment. And I'm like, that's sure what the Pac-12 wants. Those uppity princesses really want that, you know, the thuggishness of the Fresno State fans in their conference. <laughs> Hell no. Hell no, dude. But they're so yeah. agricultural, guys. They're so agricultural. <laughs> <laughs> All right, your journey, Krishna says. Now that we're heading to our bye, what player you guys see making the most impact the second half of the season? I mean, the the given is Maiden, right? Can't say Maiden on that. Yeah, Yeah. you can't. But other than Maiden, other than Maiden, other than Maiden, um, I'll tell you right now. I'll take the other give me. What's the other give me? Shavers, Tyrell Shavers, absolutely, man. That's his guy. Man. I mean, dude, you know what, Shavers though? has so much potential, man. Shavers has so much potential. Yeah, I, I think we're gonna see. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna change mine. I think we're gonna <laughs> see uh, Redman get do much better the second half of the season. That's a good call. That's a good one. Good call. Yeah. He, they just, I mean, they just didn't use him in the previous offense. So I think, I think he could get downfield more as well. Horton knows how to get tight ends the ball, man. I mean. They, we've, we've always had tight ends that that are like the focal point of the passing offense, so I, I'm not worried about Redmond getting looks from the here on out. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Butler says Jesse F. and Matthews. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean. I mean, Jesse, yeah. Jesse is going to be good no matter who's playing. And he's just yeah. a good – he's a good football player. So, he was good last year. So, as, to me, it's not so much coming out of nowhere because, to me, he's already – a a really good wide receiver. Yeah. We've had Jared Tolver on here and who talks, he's, he basically says he's a pro. Um, so uh, that's to me was, he's had too much of a history to say him already. Yeah. Can he, or will he return to last year's production with made in that quarterback? I, I mean, based off the first game, it looks like it. Yeah. I see no yeah. reason why not, man. Yeah. I, I don't see any reason why that, that couldn't happen. Could we have two, Thousand yard receivers? Do you think there's enough time left in the season? No, no. <laughs> yeah, that's a stretch. That that's that's asking for a lot. You got to <laughs> really rack up some stuff yeah. against some of the bums of the of yeah. your schedule really early on. And we already like played Idaho, Idaho State, State. We should Idaho State. We should be throwing it all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> that was, Dan would not let that go. He's like, I don't want to hear about Hawaii. We couldn't throw an Idaho State. <laughs> and they have like the worst secondary in life. Even the guy said, dude, throw it against us. <laughs> I mean, we had Bryson in there like the whole game. The whole game. Like they didn't even give any other reps to anybody else. Like, wow. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> Neither here nor there. Sports fiend, Bird and Kristen, wheel routes. You and your wheel routes, dude. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a that's a good call, hey, man. Wheel routes, wheel routes. Horton love running those uh those wheel patterns to the running backs, man. Rashad Penny and Pumphrey did that a lot. So they worked, they worked yeah. absolutely. He might be right. Penny. Uh, that's why I'm always so shocked about Penny in the NFL. I, they kind of have him mm-hmm. out on the passing plays. Speaking of Penny, go ahead. Uh, yeah. I had that jotted in our notes. Man. Penny, Rashad Penny out for the year again. Ankle injury, devastating, man. Devastating. I think it was the broke, his, broke his leg. Tibia. Yeah. Mm. Poor guy, man. He just can't catch a break, dude. Every time These he injuries gets- that he's getting aren't like hamstring or muscle injuries, dude. These are like freak stuff. severe injuries. Yeah. Yeah. Which is why it was so impressive for him to come this year and like he was, you know, getting the opportunities. He was making things happen. It's like, oh, man. Punch in the gut. Um, but hey man, glad he got that contract in, man. I mean, I don't know the ins and outs of that contract, but you get that second second contract in the NFL, like wow. Good for good for him, man. Yeah. Ah. That's another name right there. Breon Penny. We saw some, we saw some good catches there last game. I mean, you can see the talent is there. Give him a chance. Dude, trust me, all these receivers, <laughs> like the, their confidence level is probably sky high right now. Oh, yeah. They're so happy right now. Yeah. All right, guys. Anything else we need to touch on? I, I think, man, we're, we're going to go into this bye week and, you know, 
feeling good, feeling good. There's a lot of work that needs to be done. I'm looking forward to Ryan Lindley really digging in in this quarterback room and in this offense with Coach Horton and taking things up another notch, another level. You know, more, every, what, what does Shavers tweet out? New day, new levels or something like that. Every day, man, every, every practice get better. You know, it's good to hear that the, the energy just rose up in practice this past week and you saw it on the field. You saw the effort. You saw the, the desire. And, uh, you know, Nevada, Reno coming up soon. We'll do we'll another do, podcast uh, before that game, right? Yeah, we'll do absolutely. 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 So we'll get more into that. All right, everybody, for your Monday night, sonsofmontezuma.com. Make sure you guys are checking it out, checking out the store, supporting the shop. And uh, we're, we got our tailgate flags for sale. Reserve yours now. 40 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> still got, we still got plenty baby bibs, sons of Montezuma, baby bibs, yes. <laughs> it's starting to become an issue when we try to find each other in the parking lot, man. Yeah, All these sons of Montezuma flags <laughs> are popping up. <laughs> yeah, rolling up to, oh, oh I don't know you. I don't know. <laughs> no, nah, I, I know everybody who's bought the flag, man. Shout out to Robert. Shout out to Sean. All, all you guys supporting with the flags. Appreciate it. Going to have to, uh, have, to uh, have a watch party pretty soon, man. Oh, yeah. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this Monday. Thank you guys for joining on the live stream. Check out sonsofmontezuma.com. Until next time, Mateo San Diego, K5 James, Dirtball Dan. Peace. Go Aztecs. Go Aztecs. Don't hang up.